Right, guys, I've written something there which says decrease versus radians, introduction to radian measure of angles. Uh, the first line really, I, I don't know whether it's a very comfortable way of saying the best, best good way of saying it, but whatever it means, uh, to me, I'm trying to make you aware that there's another way or another unit you can use to measure angles apart from degrees. Don't understand me in an awkward way if you've got something, some kind of uh, uh, attachment to what I'm going to say now. Um, degrees are based on beliefs. Beliefs. And as far as I'm concerned, beliefs don't need to be rational in, at any time. Beliefs don't need to be rational at any time. I, I can't really tell the history of degrees and whatever, in the two minutes or whatever. But the degrees have got something to do with the Greeks believing that, I don't know that the sun or the earth was going around the sun in 360 days. Then uh, because the kind of movement is sort of secular, then you divide the circle into 360 parts, then you call one part a degree, then you divide into minutes and you go to seconds and all those things. Then voila, you've got measure of angles based on beliefs. The problem with that, angles, when you come to science, when you degrees, when you come to very, very serious engineering or scientific calculations, degrees fail. They fail, you can't use them. Then that motivated the need to sort of get a, a measure of angles which does not believe which is not based on the Greek ancient Greek belief of the Greece and whatever sun's moving what around whatever thing. And then what comes there is to talk about now we're going to come up with the uh, angles uh, in radians. So then the quick question is what is a radian? The unfortunate thing is I cannot draw a perfect circle because I don't have tools to and this software is not very good with me. But I'm going to just illustrate what I'm trying to say to mean there. Now what am I doing? I'm trying to make you experience what is the measure I call radian measuring in an angle. Let's say we've got a perfect circle here. My gods are very happy today. That looks like a perfect circle. Plus your imagination is a perfect circle. <laughs> All together. Now we want to measure angles in radians. First thing guys, everybody must understand that this distance from there is known to be radius. All together. Okay. Now I'm actually going to move away from the divisions around the what? around a circle to get a degree. I'm so almost like throwing it degrees out through the window. How do I do it? Let's do it this way. I'm trying to make you feel what a radian is. Take a, 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 a string or a fish line. Put it straight here. Put it straight tangent to the circle. Remember, a fish line is flexible, isn't it? This fish line is long enough. Then I start pulling it this way, in the direction of, in this direction. And actually, that is the positive direction of an angle. If you are turning, if you are lifting an arm this way to open an angle, we call that angle, that, we say that angle is positive. If we lift, we pull it down this way, we call that angle is negative. I've got my own kind of understanding why people chose this thing to be negative, to be positive and the other one to be negative. I'll show you what is my understanding later. Now, if I pull this, let's, let's say this was a coin, like a five rand coin. This, let's say this was a, a five rand coin. Let me write here, because you guys write five friends. Eh? 
This is a five rand coin. Then I take this fish line and pull it around what the five rand coin. This fish line at some stage is going to be seen like this. Tell me if I'm wrong. It's going to be seen like this. At some stage it will be pulled over like that. Do you agree with me? Then I'm pulling it around the, the, the what? The, the, the coin. So at some stage it's going to be somewhere there. Okay. But what I'm interested in, I'm interested in a radian. If I take this piece here and find out this length here of an arc, this length of an arc is actually equal to the radius. Now the length of an arc is the length of the radius. Then at the end of that arc there, I can comfortably say this angle is one radian. That is the angle which is one radian. An angle which is subtended by an arc equal to the radius. It's an angle radian. Then when you start doing that, from that time onwards, angles are not measured in degrees. Angles are measured using real numbers. Like you measure time, like, like you measure things like length, using real numbers. You can have something like 10,015 radians. Are we together? Okay. So let's come, let's come again to this, to this, to this fish line. Let's say I've pulled that fish line around, around, let me just increase this right here a bit. Yeah. Let's say I've put that fish line around, around, until it's standing straight this way, downwards. So is it, it's actually tangent there, on the line, on the negative axis. Then, the angle there is actually pi radians. Now pi is a real number, irrational number is a real number. So that's where you get people talking of pi being equals to 180. Then people write something like this. Pi equals to 180. Now if the angle which is represented by the semicircle, which we normally school call 180, is measured here in radians as pi radians. This thing. How would you go there, guys? So we've got a radian, we know what a radian is. Then we've got something now we call pi radians. We know pi radians gives us a straight line in the semicircle. Isn't it? Yeah. So today, from today onwards, when we want to talk about an angle of 180 degrees, maybe let's start changing the language. And say a straight line forms an angle of pi radians. What I'm hoping now is that everybody it's clear in your head that what is a radian, when, where to, how to get pi radians. So now, let's look at this. This is going to help us a lot. Now, if I wanted to know, if I wanted to know how to convert an angle from radians, now, now I, I need to be able to convert angles from radians to degrees and the vice versa. Right. Let's say now we're saying here pi. Remember, this is radians equals to 180. These are degrees. 
Now, if I want one degree here, I hope everybody sees that if I want one degree from 180, I must divide by 180. So I can divide both sides by 180. Said 180 divided by 180. These are degrees. I hope people see that I'm going to give, get me myself one degree. Is it? Then, but on the other side of the equality, coming this side, I will have to divide pi by 180. 180, as I'm dividing here, is not a degree, it's just a number, isn't it? So now, here, there are the degrees. So, which is, if, I, if I've got one degree, I've got so much of radians. All together. So now, which means now, if I've got 30 degrees, I will need this to know how many radians I've got. Is it? What mean? Each degree. Each, each degree. This, each degree. This, each degree. This, up to 30. What is that? That's multiplication. Is it? All together. So, I will have to multiply this by pi of 180 to get the radians. What is that conversion? It's from degrees to Radians, isn't it? So, this is a degree. This is a coefficient which you can use to multiply degrees to change angles to radians. That's one part. So, let me clean this a bit. Guys, if you don't understand something, please ask me. Don't wait for me to shout. So I've got 30 degrees. What I'm going to do, I want to convert this to radians. I'll get 30 multiplied by pi over 180. What I'm going to get here is radians. Then you'll see that I'll get here 30 times pi sorry, 30 times pi over 180. I simplify 30 is a common factor in 30 and in 180. What am I going to get here? I'm going to get pi over 6. So now you see angles which are measured by this kind of thing. The angle is pi over 6. But when you see that, you must know that these are radians. Am I making sense, guys? Okay. So, what am I going to do? I'm going to leave this. This. You can ignore this part of the center here, but it's very important to focus on that. And make sure that you know how to convert degrees to radians. All together. Okay. Let me get some space again. And say that, clean that. Clean that. Let's do the reverse process now. I've got pi. I've got pi radians equals to 180 degrees. Now I want to know one radian. If I wanted, I wanted one radian. I hope you can see that if I wanted one radian from pi radians, I would divide by pi. Then I'll give this thing equals to 180 over pi. Now, when I get that factor, that kind of a factor, it's not really, this is a, I can say this is a radian. How to This is a radian. So, if I've got so much, I said this is conversion from degrees to radians, isn't it? So, this one will help you convert from radians Two degrees. 
then that is important also. So, again, it's a question of multiplication because every radian will be worth this degrees. Radian, this degrees. Radian, this degrees. So, again, it's a factor which you multiply any angle in radian to take it to work to degrees. Is that clear? Okay. So, now, that, that fish line, that fish line which I talked about, I can actually wrap it right round. Wrap it right round until I come back here to zero. But when I get there to zero, the angle is no longer zero. The angle is what? 360 degrees. And there is two semicircles. But one semicircle was pi, then the two semicircles would be what? Would be two pi. All together. Then you can tell me what is 90 degrees. Is half of 180, isn't it? So which is, is what this will be equal to? Pi over 2. What will be 45 degrees? It's half of this one. Then this is pi over 4. So guys, today, what did you learn? We can define what? A, a trigonometric function for any angle, which is not necessarily in a right angle triangle. And we've got a new measure of angles independent of beliefs. For me, it's good for angles to be independent of beliefs because beliefs are not supposed to be rational. So, I think for that I'm going to stop there, hoping that everything is clear and you are going to engage and understand more. If there are questions, you come back to me with this cast. Thank you.